Hey everybody, welcome back to Our Liberty House. It is Lucas here with you today. Very exciting day. We are starting our fall seeds. We got them all laid out here. You know, this is Sacramento 9B. Time to start seeds here in late July, early August. It's crazy, right? It's 100 degrees out. But if you want to avoid buying starts from the nursery, you gotta start them now. So we've got our cells laid out here. We've got our seeds laid out. We have our greenhouse that we use primi primarily for our spring to summer garden setup, but it works just the same. You know we love this thing. It takes 20, 30 minutes to set up. We sort it in a tote out of the way. When we're not using it, pop it up, get our seeds out. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna go over exactly what we're starting for our fall and winter garden where we got the seeds from, you know, what we're growing. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to comment if we're missing something, if there's something that we're not growing that you think in Sacramento, in zone 9B, we should be growing, let us know. We'll get them ordered, we'll get them in the ground. We want to start things that you guys are growing. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go over everything that we're growing, show you guys, you know, like I said, where we got them from. Let's get them in, let's get them started. You know, summer's ending, let's get our fall garden in, let's get going. Okay everybody, seed starting time. Let's go over what we're growing. You can see I got my tags laid out here. I've got two six by six cells. So we'll plant six of each of these and go from there. So the first thing we're gonna start is our Brussels sprouts. So. We've got these Renee's Garden Brussels sprouts. Um, they're a Hestia Brussels sprout. We've been really happy with Renee's Garden seeds, so we're gonna try their winter Brussels sprouts. So that's gonna go here. In the past, we've grown Brussels, but I think we always planted them too late. So we're gonna to try to get them in in late August so they give them some good warm growing time and then you know ripen in the late fall, winter. So let's plant these. You know, I just use my Sharpie that I use to make the tags for a little hole. And I like to drop two seeds per cell. I got three there. All right, so like I said, these are the Hestia variety Brussels sprouts from Renee's. You know, I think they're supposed to be just a generic Brussels sprout, but like I said, we've been very happy with Renee's garden, so you'll see a lot of them we got from Renee's here. The next one is our broccoli. This is another one we got from Renee's, but it was from a seed uh, exchange we did. The black creme tomatoes you've seen in other videos that are super great were from Renee's, so they also, in the seed exchange, sent this broccoli. So here's another option for us for broccoli. So let's plant these. The one thing I'd recommend when you're starting seeds, always pre-wet your soil. So that's what I did. I filled this all up with that EB Stone gardening mix or seed starting mix, pre-wet it and then we'll cover them and we'll, we'll soak it again. Like I said, I always like to drop two per hole. Oh, gives you the best germination rates. So that's the Renee's Garden Bravado Broccoli. Where are we moving on to? 
cauliflower. Renee's garden as well. You'll see a theme here. We went, you know, we like to go with one seed company for a season just to see how everything does, unless there's, you know, absolutely something that we hear is phenomenal from another company. So this is just a hybrid F1 cauliflower. It's called Amazing Taste, which I hope it lives up to the hype or to the name. So cauliflower, great, you know, fall, winter seed variety. Now tell me in the comments, do any of you guys grow any of the uh, colored cauliflower? We haven't really gotten into it because I kind of think they all taste the same. So I just want to go with like the best quality seed. These had really good reviews. Um, but like the orange and the purple cauliflowers, those seem really interesting. So let me know if that's something we're missing out on um, taste wise or growth wise or really just for fun. Let us know. Here's the Renee's Amazing Taste Cauliflower. So the next one is our Napa Cabbage. So we went with the baby Napa Cabbage variety from Renee's. Uh, it's called Little Jade. Last year we were really successful growing Napa Cabbage, but they were a very large variety Napa cabbage and the pests really got to us, um, you know, through the season. So when we were harvesting them, we were having to like peel a ton off. So these are supposed to be a little quicker to grow, a little bit smaller to harvest, um, hopefully avoid some of those pests. And it's just Beth and I here, so we don't need giant multiple pound heads of Napa cabbage. So I'm hoping that this Little Jade, also a hybrid F1 variety, that I'm hoping that, you know, lets us get meal-sized Napa cabbage. So this is exciting. We love to use it, you know, in stir fries, in slaws in the, you know, winter time. Uh, there's a lot of uses for Napa cabbage. I like it better than the traditional head cabbage. I just think it has a better flavor, a better crunch. So we'll get these in here. Alright, now cabbage in. What's next? Alright, pak choy. Bok choy, pak choy. Honestly, I don't know the difference. Tell me the difference in the comments, please. Um, also, another great stir fry, you know, soup kind of vegetable. They grow great here. We grew them from starts last year, so we figured let's save a little bit of money, start some seeds. So this is also the baby pak choy. So it's smaller. You don't get the giant ones that you can't eat, you know, just with two people. It's called Green Fortune. So we'll plant some of these. You know it's great when you get into seed starting. It's a little bit of an upfront cost to get everything you know put together, but you think the prices of starts are going up all the time. So for like one pak choy or one bok choy, it's a three to four dollars. We bought this whole seed pack for three bucks. So just something to think about when you're like, oh, I don't want to get into seed starting because of the upfront cost. Really, if you commit to doing it year in and year out, you're going to save money uh, long time, long term. So you get to talking and forgetting where I uh, put seeds. Wouldn't be the first time I've missed a cell. Alright, so that's the Baby Pak Choy uh, Green Fortune from Renee's. The other one is our kale. So this is a container kale variety. It's a curly kale. We like kale. It grows great in Sacramento. Um, 
it can withstand the heat, but it also is super delicious in the fall when temperatures start to cool down. So we're gonna try this kale, and I'm gonna show you a, a kale we grew last year that we're gonna try as well. So this is also from Renee's. It's a F1, so it's a hybrid. Um, it's supposed to be really good for containers, which we plant them in our tree boxes that you see in a lot of our um, garden tours. I'm really struggling to open this thing. The green curls container kale. And that's what we're gonna grow in our tree boxes. You know, I think kale's an acquired taste. A lot of people don't like kale, but I think if you, it's so versatile because you can mix it in, in, uh, you know, like a Zupa Toscana, that like Olive Garden soup. You can eat it raw too. You know, I just, I don't love it like as a whole kale salad, but if you mix it in with some other greens, like it's a super healthy, good variety of, uh, green leaf lettuce that you can try and honestly they're easy to grow like I've grown kale a few times and it's always produced so I'd recommend trying it you know get uh, a little adventurous in your kitchen and try some different things with kale you know if you don't like it raw try it sauteed try it you know try it a different way see so this is the Johnny's kale we grew this last year it's another curly leaf kale variety it gets a little bit taller the Renee's one is supposed to be a more container variety we grew this one last year super great success harvested it you know from fall all the way through spring before it got hot so a good one from Johnny's Johnny's always delivers with seeds Try this one. Now we've actually been thinking about maybe trying like the dinosaur kale or you know, some other kale varieties, but we just really like the more curly leaf varieties. I think they taste a little bit better. Uh, they hold up to this climate a little bit better. So if you're looking for a kale variety in Sacramento, we've had really good success with the curly leaf variety so romaine this is traditionally you know direct seeded you can buy starts so we're gonna try it this is just a Paris Island uh, variety romaine um, we eat a ton of Caesar salad so I'm gonna try to start some seeds um, this one is from Lake Valley organics uh, it's kind of uh, you can get it at any of the big box stores here in Sacramento these seeds you know lettuce seeds are always interesting because they're tiny you can't even see them so let's plant some romaine and what will be fun about starting these early is I've I've tried to start them in like the late fall like direct seeded I just don't think it's hot enough to get uh, germinated so we're going to start them in these seed cells early to try to get some starts and then we'll transplant them in the garden luckily you know we have like you've seen in a lot of our videos we have a lot of shade from you know our tomatoes right now and so we'll use advantageously we'll use things that are shading out from that super hot summer heat we'll use uh, that shade for some of these fall seeds when we do transplant them so on the same accord, I'm gonna do some butter crunch. Um, make sure I have it labeled right. Yeah, we're gonna do some butter crunch, just another lettuce from Lake Valley as well. We tried direct seeding these multiple times. We're really bad about direct seeding because we don't keep them moist. So I'm gonna try uh, to get better about keeping them moist in the greenhouse. Do this. It's so hard with these small seeds to be like, oh, well, I'm going to do two per cell and just sprinkle. See what happens. So that's 
the majority of the you know fall stuff we're planting but we're also going to try for the first time this year starting onions and these onions obviously are from seed rather than a bulb start you would get so I'm just gonna sprinkle on quite a few uh, seeds let them germinate and then we'll split them as they get bigger and then put them in the garden so you can buy those like bunched onion starts which are a little bit different than the bulbs so that's basically what we're going to do here we're going to plant this uh, baker creek red florence variety that's supposed to grow really good in sacramento and also a yellow uh, variety called the yellow sweet spanish and so i'm going to sprinkle on a whole bunch of these and then I'll top this whole thing with a little bit more seed starting mix, water it in, and we'll go from there. But this is kind of the long game. You know, we're gonna get these in in November, uh, you know, harvest them in spring for our onions. If you are a good onion grower in Sacramento, please comment. We grew onions fine when we were in South Dakota. We suck at it out here. Uh, I want to get those big, bulby onions. So let me know what we're doing wrong. When do you plant your onions? Do you do it from seed? Do you do it from those bunched onion starts? Or do you just do it from the bulbs that you can get from a big box store? So get quite a few of these. I mean, we eat a ton of onions, so we want to grow them ourselves so we don't buying them all the time. So I'm just going to sprinkle on quite a few per cell. This is our experiment one, this is the onions. And then, like I said, the yellow Spanish onion. These red florins, I'll put a picture in a little bit closer here. They're a little bit smaller of a red onion, which I think is perfect because you buy like a whole big red onion from the store and you're like, what do I do with this? You know, I just want it for a sandwich or, you know, make some pickle onions. So these are smaller, which we kind of like. Um, so we're not wasting a whole bunch of onion. But we cook with yellow and white onions multiple times a week, so we got a big, bulby yellow onion as well. Yeah, like I said, it's going to be 100 degrees out here in Sac, but you have to get your... Um, fall seeds in earlier you just you'll be too late you'll miss the boat so that's what we're doing it'll be great for germination I won't have to use the seed mats or anything um, just use the ambient temperature here in that greenhouse and then we'll add the lights like, like we normally do so I got all the seeds in here like I said we'll put pictures of everything in drop you know a description in there for you guys so that's what we're doing we're starting our fall seeds we're going to direct seed um, some parsnips and some turnips which do like to germinate in the heat um, so we're going to do that and if you want to see how these seeds are doing if you want to follow along with us make sure you subscribe i will do a follow-up video to our fall seed starting going forward uh, and then after that they will just fall into our playlist for our garden tours um, these will be in the uh, fall winter garden tour uh, make sure you guys check out our spring summer playlist garden tours if you want to see what's growing right now i do thank you for your guys's time make sure like i said if you want to start seeds for the fall you need to be doing it you know late july early august falls right around the corner it'll sneak up on you don't miss the boat i'll catch you guys next week check out our channel hit that thumbs up button if you want to see more seed starting content thank you guys